It's so are back for another video. Today we have the MobaPad Qi 2 Mechanical Controller. It's connected through Bluetooth, meaning you could connect your Apple, Android, PC, and even your Switch devices. With its mechanical buttons, it has faster response time, 6-axis feature for gyro, even has Hall Effects electromagnetic joystick so you don't have to worry about drift. It has macro programming, turbo, we have around 56 hours, we'll put a link down below. Here's your barcode or serial number, so let's err it up! What's inside the box? We have a USB-A, USB-C cable, D-pad button, manual. Then we have our controller. Now, I do like the color scheme on this. Kind of reminds me of the Nintendo family computer way back then. Doesn't have any gold or it's not off-white, but it's similar to it. What do you think? Now, the grips on each side has this texture for more hold. It goes in the back. I have your average hands and finger size, just right. We have your X, Y, B, and A, and if you can hear that, you have mechanical buttons, meaning just like faster response time. Same for the shoulder buttons and also the triggers. You got the mobile pad logo in the middle. You have plus minus screen capture home button, turbo and macro programming, and your profile LED. In the back, you have the M1, M2, and the pairing button. You have that little pinhole for reset. We have the Hall Effect joystick, so you don't have to worry about it drifting. Surrounded with a metal ring, so it doesn't wear out. Also clicks. Now these buttons actually come out. It doesn't come with like a spare or anything, so maybe if you just want to swap it, you just pull, comes out. Same on the other side. Pull, pop it out. It does feel good on the hand. Now you have the D-pad here. You notice that this is more like a dish, kind of like a satellite shape. You can swap it with the cross button or this is actually interesting. I might actually just stay with this one. But you can't swap it. All you got to do is just pull it out. You have the other one. Does it lock in? So you have those little tabs there that would lock in in place with this so you just kind of push it in till you hear like a click there so it's not like gonna come off if you have it face down it's not coming off now it's a regular d-pad clicks pretty good but we'll swap it with this button i like this one better take this off the other one huh Oh, okay. You see this little part here, it kind of sticks out. There's a little slot here that goes to it. So I had it upside down or another way around. That's why I wasn't able to go in. So grab that, make sure it's in that side. There you go. Way easier. Yeah, this one feels, I feel like it's a little bit better. We have L1, L2, R1, R2. And at the back here, now the location, of these buttons i mean i think it would have been a little bit better if it was placed maybe where my middle fingers are because when you're pressing it, it it's kind of um it's a little far off so when i have to press it you kind of have to have your middle finger go up a little bit more compared to maybe if i have it down here just click it here just like this 8-bit do it rests on the buttons now that could be a good thing or a bad thing that all depends on the person because if you program that to do a function might accidentally press it so it all depends on the person but for me i kind of prefer it near the middle finger so let us know you like this positioning here or would you want it a little bit down here more in the back you just have your model number and up here this is where you charge you got the usb c it lights up when you're plugged you got the blue led channel and then you have that logo for mobile pad it's white so this is a Bluetooth control, meaning you can use it for your Switch, PC, Android, and Apple devices. In case you want the layout, you want to know how to connect it, we we'll just go ahead and pause the video for each page. Switch, PC, wired PC, Apple devices, Android. Now we're mostly going to use it for a Switch, sometimes maybe with our Apple device. Let's go ahead and connect it. Go to your controllers, change grip order, pull it. Then in the back here, press the pair button. Hold it. 
there you go once you have that solid blue LED light it's paired like the home button there you go now let's put it to sleep let's see if we can wake up the switch I just click the home button there you go Now the 6 won't have any drift, I mean it is a brand new controller as well, but it has all effects, but let's just show you anyway. Left, right, all around. Yeah, the button, or the stick. Let's try some macro programming. Okay, to do it is you press the button first, the macro button, hold it for three seconds until it turns purple, that light. There you go, it's purple. So let's just say, let's do a, a punch, a jump, jump, and uppercut. And once you're done, you're happy with that, click the button either M1 or M2. That should do it. Ah, it took me. So now once you press M1, punch, jump, jump uppercut now the maximum input you can put is 32 of them and you have about five seconds for each recording and if you want to disable these buttons just in case that hey you know what i'm pressing it accidentally so what you do is just press a macro button twice quickly and it shouldn't do it anymore so if you click it as you can see it's not doing that function anymore it's not jumping and doing the uppercut it's cleared and if you want to enable it again, you want it the same function, just go ahead and click twice to turn it on. We have the vibrate. Now if you click this, it'll do the function. And just a reminder, the most you can do is macro is 32 and the time you have 5 seconds. So let's try the macro loop. Let's just say you jump and fireball, jump and fireball. You want to repeat that over and over. So let's go ahead and set that up first for a macro. Let it turn purple jump and fireball and set it for m2 this time so when i click this there's a jump and fireball if you want to repeat that over and over so just go ahead and press the macro button and the m2 so you just repeat over and over so let's say the x the shield i want it to be rapid all you have to do is press the turbo button click the x so every time you press that See that blinking, the logo? It's rapid fire. Now if you just want to just press it one time, it keeps it looping. Press the turbo again, second time around. If you press it, it won't stop. And if to clear it, just go on the third time, you'll stop it. Now if you want that turbo to be faster or slower, you can adjust it. So let's turbo the shield again, like that. To change the speed of the turbo, either you go right or left, or just let it loop around. So for example, I want it faster, so that's at the slowest speed. Press the turbo, go to the right, you have the vibration, speeding a little bit faster. And I believe this is the fastest. Of course, if you go right again, and go to the first setting, which is the slowest. Works the same way if you go on the left as well. You can also switch the colors on your controller. Let's try it on the M logo. You have a white one. Let's go ahead and press a macro button. Click the minus. You got blue, red, green, yellow, and baby blue. Which color do you like? You even have pink. I'd say I go with, let's go with red to match it. Now you can also switch it up if you want it dimming or you want it turned off. This time you press a plus button. This one's kind of like dimming. Kind of like breathing, that's kind of cool. And if you just want it off, then on. I think I kind of like it kind of dimming. What do you think? Let's try it on the other color. Green, yellow. To connect to our Apple device, you press the right directional button, then the home button. Wait until the flashing goes to the third channel. So go ahead and press it. There it is, it's blinking. Go to your Bluetooth setting. For some reason, it's called Xbox Wireless Controller. So you go ahead and click that. Wait until it connects. And then now it's connected. 
download their app. Go ahead, click the firmware, make sure we have the updated version. Okay, there's a new update. Let's go ahead and update it first. All right, we're back on the home screen. Let's go ahead and do the button test. So this just shows the button you're pressing. Make sure it's actually registering. Do see it in registering. So the profile configuration, current configure. Let's go ahead and edit that or let's add one. Let us know in the comments below. We seem to be having an issue. This could be a firmware or a software. So you can see when I'm moving it around, this doesn't even move. I mean, I can adjust this, but I won't be able to tell it's not moving. Let us know in the comments below if you're having these issues as well. You could adjust the settings here on the left and right joystick. But even if I do that, doesn't even move let's just go ahead and reset it to default now you can do a button remapping let's just say we want our a for example remap that to l1 remap it to l1 click ok now that's l1 as you can see that's l1 on the a let's go ahead and save it label this as test let's go to the button test so if I click A here, you see that L1 is lighting up on the top left. If you want to reset it, just go ahead on the button back down here, set it again. You do it. So their software needs a little bit more work, so I'm trying to reset it to default. As you can see, our A is still L1, even though I'm pressing, it's not working. So let's just do it manually, click L1. You map that to A, click OK. Now we're back to normal. Make sure you save it. Just go on the button test, just make sure it's not being pressed anymore. So this is good. Pressing A, not L1 anymore. So if you go to these options here, like official, they have Tears of the Kingdom, they have their custom already already set up. If you want to apply that, it's up to you. So their joystick and button mapping need some software rework in there. So let's go ahead and try light, see if this works properly. Got the light mode, you could have it always on. Let's try making it breathe. Alright, this works. Let's turn it off. Alright. Put on always, and then let's try to do slow breathing. Okay, so that one works. Let's just try fast. Okay. Oh, the brightness, let's see, you can make it lower, make it really bright. Okay, that one works. Now let's try the color. Does it work? Try blue, red. Yellow. Okay. So that one works. So out of three of them, only one works. The light works, button remap, joystick needs to be reworked. And this is just to show you it's connected on the iPhone. In case you want to know how to shut it off right away. Now, if you just leave it on for about 15 minutes on standby, it'll turn off. But if you want to shut it right away, click, click the home button. To wake up the switch, just click the home button. There you go. So this does have Amiibo NFC support, HD Rumble, also of course, Gyro. Just in case you want to hear the rumble, now the other thing is you can adjust it to make it weaker or stronger. I wish that's something they would add. Is it light or heavy? It all depends on the person. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Mobile pad weighs at 214 grams. Compared to like an 8-bit dough. This one's at 250 grams. So that's your mobile pad Chi 2 HD mechanical controller. Swap over comes with a dish style D-pad button. Hall effect sticks, you don't have to worry about drifting. Also covered in metal. Mechanical buttons, faster response time. Customizable, change it on your controller or the app. NFC Amiibo support, turbo, macro, HD rumble, and six axis gyro. Change the LED colors to your liking. Have it standby or have it breathing. Connected through Bluetooth so you can use it for your PC, Android, Apple, or even your Switch devices. We got it for around $56. off. we put a link down below. So which controller do you use? So let's hurry it up to another video.